Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Tonight we'll be talking remotely with Dr. Ira Kirschenbaum. Dr. Kirschenbaum is an orthopedic surgeon who is the chairman of orthopedic surgery at Bronx Lebanon Hospital in Bronx, New York. Good afternoon, Dr. Kirschenbaum. Good afternoon, Dr. Seacrest. Well, Dr. Kirschenbaum, tonight what I thought we would talk about is, is a, uh, a procedure that is, is sometimes confusing to patients, and that's what, what we would term a revision total knee replacement. And for you and I, what that means is that the patient has already had one or two, maybe even three artificial knee replacements in the same knee, and perhaps those uh, knee replacements have worn out, they become loose, or for some reason, we're now going back in and replacing a previous artificial knee replacement. So that's what we would refer to as a revision total knee replacement. And as I understand it, revision total knee replacements are a little bit different than the first time you place a total knee or an artificial knee replacement in a knee that's never had any type of artificial knee placed before. So if you could, let's start out by talking a little bit about the difference between a revision and a primary artificial knee replacement. Well, thank you. The, the major difference, first of all, is that in a revision knee replacement, as you said, the knee itself was previously operated on. Now I want to make a distinction between converting any previous knee surgery to a knee replacement versus a revision knee replacement. The difference is sometimes you could have had a different operation, maybe a fracture, maybe some screws put in. That's a very different thing we're talking about right now than having a total knee replacement already in, it failing, and then going on and getting a second one or a third one. That's the topic we're talking about, revising or removing an old joint replacement and placing in a new one. So I'd like to first of all start with a clear definition for the patient so they clearly know what we're talking about. Now let's talk a little bit about the difference of these two because you know, I think one of the things we, we need to clear up with patients is that you know, we've been doing total knee replacements for a long time now, and, and total knee replacements normally don't last your whole lifetime. I mean, if, if, if a knee replacement lasts 12 to 15 years, that's usually a pretty good run for that first artificial knee replacement. So as, as the population is aging more, we're seeing revision total knee replacements, not because there's something necessarily wrong with the way the first artificial knee was done, but we're just wearing them out. People are living long enough that they're going to need that second uh, knee replacement. Um, so I think, I think we need to clarify that just because you, you, your surgeon is telling you you need a revision doesn't necessarily mean something is wrong. It's just that you, you've probably got all the life out of that uh, knee replacement. Now I think the other thing we should point out too is that, is that some of these knee replacements don't work as well as we would like. And I, I'm hoping that you're going to go through some of the statistics about you know, what to expect from a knee replacement and, and why we end up having to do these revisions um, uh, when those knees begin to fail. But I think that, that patients need to understand that, I guess in general, this is a much, I would say, bigger operation, not necessarily a bigger operation from the standpoint of it, uh, you know, it, it requires a bigger incision or something like that, but there's a lot more involved with trying to get that artificial knee out of the knee get the knee prepared so that you can put another knee in on top of it. Um, so give us your ideas about, and philosophy perhaps, about when you sit down and talk to a patient, how do you prepare them for that big operation? Sure. Well, first of all, irrespective of why the previous knee failed, as you said, whether it wore out in time, the plastic wore out, and a variety of other reasons, which I guess we can touch on later. The first thing I say to a patient who needs another knee replacement is, right off the bat, everything is worse the second time. Everything is worse the second time. That doesn't mean it's a disaster and they won't get a good result, but every aspect you can expect not to be better. Let me go through some of the categories that I talk with patients about what's not better. First of all, complications. Infection rate after a revision knee replacement is higher than infections after a primary knee replacement. 
That doesn't mean you're going to get infected. It means that your chance, your chance of getting infected is higher. Some people say as many as two to six times higher with a revision. The second thing that's worse is your motion. It's very common to have less motion after a revision knee replacement than after a primary. The third is stability. It is possible because of worn out parts of the previous knee that erode or injure the ligaments and the stability structures of the knee that the second knee is a little more unstable which means it would wiggle a little bit more and it may not be as strong. And the last part is your general feeling about whether or not you feel this operation was successful. Essentially what I'm referring to is patient satisfaction. If you were to look at a hundred patients who had a primary knee replacement that the surgeon would look at the x-ray and say this is successful and they have a good range of motion and take another group of 100 patients who had a revision knee replacement which had good range of motion and the surgeon looked at the x-rays and thought it was successful the group of patients who had the primary knee replacement would perceive their knee as a higher quality result. Reasons? Again, stability, motion, flexibility, that's one of the major things to think about. Now that doesn't mean you can't get a remarkable result from a revision knee replacement. On an individual level, statistics don't have much bearing. I have done many revision knee replacements where the patients have done remarkably well. But if I look at larger numbers of patients, I would find that there is definitely a decrease in the quality of the results, no matter how successful the revision surgery turned out to be. Now what about things like pain? Do you find that patients with a revision knee replacement have a bit more knee pain after than patients after a primary knee replacement? The issue of pain after a revision knee replacement is hard to assess for a number of reasons. First, pain is an individual patient issue. There are people who can go through dental work without Novocaine and other people need general anesthesia. So right off the bat, it's hard to compare pain from one patient to another entirely. The second is, people who need a revision knee replacement often come to me with a lot of pain because of the failure of the first knee. So they will perceive the operation hopefully as an improvement over the pain previously. But to answer your question in an experienced way, what I have seen in the last 15 to 20 years in my practice is that the pain after a revision knee is on a bit higher level. There's a lot more surgery going on, a lot more scar removed, and in general if you had to compare a group of a hundred patients in one or another, the revision group would have a bit more pain, but I don't consider it extraordinary difference, just so you know. Now let's talk about a couple of other things you said. I think, I think it's pretty clear that, that infection, if it occurs, is a, a thing that, that all surgeons and patients should fear because that, that really puts the, the, the surgery in a whole different classification is probably going to require additional surgery to get that infection cleared up. But you made, you made a couple of other comments. One was the range of motion and the other was the stability. How do I as a patient, what symptoms do I feel when that knee is unstable? How, is, how am I gonna know that that knee is unstable? And we're referring of course to after the revision surgery, whether it's unstable. That is correct. Yeah, most of the time that's going to be in activities where you're bending the knee and turning. For example, if you're going up and down steps, or if you're squatting a little bit, or you're going up a curb and turning to the side. Usually the stability when a knee is perfectly straight is fine. It's usually going to be in what we call mid-flexion, when your knee is partially bent, if you're unstable at all. But you will feel a sense of your knee not quite supporting you as strongly. Now over the last five to ten years the device industry 
has developed quite a number of advances in the quality of the revision knee replacements to compensate for the lack of ligaments and to bring you back some of that stability. So a good joint replacement surgeon would use every one of these tools available to make sure if your ligaments are not fully supporting you, then the metal and plastic with more stable implants, different kinds of implants from the companies would substitute for your inability to be stable with your own ligaments and offer stability through the metal and plastic.